Okay, today we're going to look at how to integrate your boxing with your MMA, your mixed martial art practice. You can't box the same way, you can't punch the same way you would punch in a boxing match uh, as you would in a, in a mixed martial art competition. Mainly because in boxing you don't expect the guy to come in under your punches and take you down. In MMA, it's not only a possibility, it's a likelihood. So, you have to be careful about that. You're always anticipating his shot so that off of any punch you're ready to sprawl and get a front head lock, over under hook, depending on the type of uh, takedown he's going for. In this case, you got a guy that's coming in for a double, very common. And I'm gonna sprawl and follow up off of that. But the key here is how we're integrating it with our boxing. So if I'm here, if he's face off me, I'm throwing punches, he comes in under. See, he's already in there, and I was extended forward. Because it turns out that the finishing posture of a boxing punch ends up being bad position for a wrestler. So I have to be ready when he shoots under that punch to underhook here and throw my hips back, keep my hips square, and keep my weight on him. Now from here, what I want to do is go behind him. But every time I try to circle, he circles with me. So what I do is, I have two choices. If I want to go this way, I'm going to bring this underhook down, join my hands together, and strip the arm away into a front headlock. My head is in his armpit, and I start to circle this way until I can actually grab, I can grab a hold of his ankle. Then he can't circle, and then I go behind him. And here I am, and I can hit. However, if as I circle, he circles with me, then I'll use the inside of this bicep to shuck his head as he's circling, and then I get to his back on the left side. So looking at that again, once I'm here, I've already sprawled his shot. I've got this front headlock. I'm trying to circle, and so I so shuck the head, and then I get behind him, more or less agreeing with the circle, the direction he's going rather than just circling with him, in which case I really get nowhere. So looking at this again, again, the main, I would say, the main lesson here is looking at how you punch when you got a guy that's ready to go under that punch and come in and take you down. This means you can't, you know, extend it, you can't leave your arms away from your body. You have to tighten up, you have to be able to pull those punches back sooner so that as soon as he comes in, you're already ready to scoop that shoulder with your underhook. And then his drive just drives your hips back. So now he shoots, and here I am. I did not overextend, I was prepared for his shot. And now I circle, and if I can't get behind him, I shrug that head, I shove the head with my arm here. My arm shoves his head this way as I get behind him. Be prepared though, because often once you get halfway behind them, before you can get your your, your hook's in, he'll roll to here and put you in his half guard. Lie on your side. Just lie on your side. He'll do this and try to put you in the guard. Which means once you're here, try to push, put me in your guard. Yeah, this is what he wants. But before he gets there, go back again. Up here. I've circled behind his back. Here. Once I've circled behind here and he rolls to half guard, then I'm going to tap this knee, and he's trying to put me, I'm going to walk around, and then look up on this arm, and then settle in to scarf hold, okay? Once your hips clear that leg right there, you got a nice scarf hold. So look at this again. I'm punching, but I know he might shoot. He shoots, and I've got him. I circle, he circles with me, I shut the head. He rolls to his back. And I tap this knee before he can bring it through. And I come around and I stabilize with modified scarf hold. This way, even if you weren't going for the takedown, you ended up with side control with a nice modified scarf from which you can continue to attack.